That's the shortest I've ever heard him. I'm saying, I don't think I've ever heard that before. Good. You're learning. Thank you, sir. That's very good. Thank you. Thank you all very much. You were making a lot of progress. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tell the Commissioner of the IRS not to disclose to the House Ways and Means Committee your tax They'll speak to my lawyers. They'll speak to the Attorney General. Will you direct the IRS to do that? They'll speak to my lawyers and they'll speak to the Attorney General. Thank you. Mr. President, one that lowers the U.S. trade deficit with China. And how soon will it be before you can judge this particular trade deal? Well, I think a trade deal with China is good for the world. It's good for us and China, but it's good also for the world. I think it's very important. Uh, we'll see if it, if it happens. Uh, we've never done a deal like this with China. Uh, and uh, it's a very unique set of circumstances. But it's a massive deal. Could be one of the — I guess it is, if you think about it — the biggest deal ever made. There can't be a deal like this. No matter where you look, there can't be a deal like this. This is uh, — this is the granddaddy of them all. And we'll see if it happens. It's got a very, very good chance of happening. I think that it will be great for both countries. But it will be — it will be a much fairer deal for us, because over the years, we've uh, lost a lot of — a lot of money to China. China's done very well. And I don't blame China. I say it all the time. I don't blame China. I blame the people that sat right at this desk. They should have never allowed that to happen. So uh, it will — bring a lot of things back. I think it'll be great for the United States. I think it's going to be, hopefully, really good for China, too. It's going to be good for everybody. Yeah. Mr. President. What's still left to agree to, sir? What are the only well, we have things. We have things. We're talking uh, intellectual property protection and theft, <coughs> talking about uh, certain tariffs. It's very important that certain elements of the tariff uh, that uh, is in discussion right now. Uh, we have a number of things, but we've also agreed — we've agreed to far more than we have left to agree to. And, in fact, I would say — I think I can say that some of the toughest things have been agreed to. We have some things that are actually easier right now that we're — that we're doing. But it's a very, very uh, — using a word that I don't like using too often, but it's a very, very comprehensive deal. Uh, it's very complete. Uh, we discuss everything. We. We talk about everything. When we first started, people would say, well, you'll never talk about intellectual property. You'll never talk, you'll never talk about a vast array of elements. Uh, every one of them is not only talked about, but highly negotiated. And whether it's our farmers or our technology people, all of them will be really happy. And I think China is going to be very happy, too. Tariffs. What would you like to see happen with tariffs? Well, I don't want to say that to you, but I'm going to be discussing that with the Vice Premier in about uh, five minutes, as soon as you leave. But uh, just a lot of good things are happening. A lot of really great things are happening. And I think very important is the relationship with China uh, is very strong, probably the strongest it's ever been, in a sense. And yet we're negotiating a strong deal. But I think our relationship is at a point that's about at the highest it's been. And that's not — that's not a bad thing. That's a very good thing. Is there anything like the negotiation? And do you plan to have a negotiation with China? Do you plan to remove all tariffs to respond to China's issues? Well, when you say negotiation, he's a very tough negotiator, and so is President Xi. But, I mean, it's so nice when I see the fentanyl, because that's been so — we lost 77,000 people due to fentanyl. And uh, that was a very important thing, and I really appreciate it. And this is before the deal is done. This is something that China is doing before the deal is done. I think you're going to see a big impact, a tremendous impact. Yes, ma'am. Mr. President, if the deal is to is rich, what kind of benefit will it bring for both countries? Say it again. If there is a deal, um, what kind of benefit will it bring for both countries? Well, I think it's going to be great for China in that China will continue to trade with the United States. I mean, otherwise, it would be very tough for us to allow that to happen. And we are China's by far biggest trading partner. There are, you know, they are a tremendous trading partner in the other way, too, from our standpoint. But it'll be a great deal from, for China because we're going to continue to deal. We're going to continue to have a relationship in terms of trade. Otherwise, it would be very tough to do that in a large way, as we have in the past, because it was a very one-sided — one-sided thing. From our standpoint, we love dealing with them. They have certain products that are tremendous. Uh, they have certain pricing advantages that we take advantage of. 
a lot of advantages. And I think just the relationships between the two countries are very, you know, it's very strong. And that's an important element of what we're doing, having that, maintaining the great relationship, which perhaps we would maintain anyway, but certainly we maintain that with a deal like this. This will be a, a really terrific, very unique deal. This is an epic deal, historic. If it happens, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Are you looking for people who are I've recommended Herman Cain. He's a very uh, a terrific man, a terrific person. He's a friend of mine. Uh, I have recommended him highly for the Fed. I've uh, told my folks that that's the man, and we'll, uh, he's doing some pre-checking now, and uh, I would imagine he'd be in great shape. I find Herman to be an outstanding person a truly outstanding individual. Um, I would think he would do very well there. Yes? Mr. President, is there still an imminent threat of you potentially closing the border, or is it everything for uh, immigration? Well, you know, Mexico has been here? Mexico has been uh, doing a very good job the last three or four days since we talked about closing the border, which is very real. Uh, but what's more real initially is tariffs on the cars coming in, a 25 percent tariff on the cars being made in Mexico coming in. You know, Mexico, prior to my becoming president, took close to 30 percent of our car business. Okay? That's a lot. That's a big, big chunk. They did that under NAFTA. And I have all — for years, I've been talking about it. I think NAFTA is one of the worst deals ever made, one of the worst trade deals ever made, maybe the worst. And Mexico took a big chunk of our car business, uh, which I don't like. And I haven't liked, and I've spoken about it long and hard, long before I became president, when I was a civilian, so to speak. And I will say this, that uh, Mexico, in the last four days, has really done a great job on their southern border, with Honduras, with Guatemala, with El Salvador, of, of grabbing and taking and bringing people back to their countries, because they're not going to come to our country. We're not going to allow it. What's happened on our southern border is a disgrace. And Mexico has brought people back. They've told people, you can't come in. And that's happened really over. They've done, as I understand it, over a 1,000 today, over a 1,000 people yesterday, over a 1,000 people the day before. Before that, they never did anything. So if we don't, and they have the strongest immigration laws, as strong as there is anywhere in the world. They can do it if they want to do it. They've never really wanted to do it for many, many years. And we've told them, if you don't do that, we're going to close the border. But before we close the border, we'll put the tariffs on the cars. I don't think we'll ever have to close the border, because the penalty of tariffs on cars coming into the United States from Mexico at 25 percent will be uh, massive. So the border stays open at least for a year? No, I didn't say that. Uh, we're going to — we would start with the tariffs, and we'll see what happens. But uh, they are removing people out of Mexico on the way up to the United States. And if you take a look, you'll see a big difference. Now, maybe by the end of this news conference, or maybe tomorrow, that'll stop. And if that stops, we're doing a big tariff deal, and that'll be fine with me, too, because you know I like tariffs. I'm one of the people that really like tariffs. Okay? Go ahead. This year marks the 40th anniversary of UN, UN China relation. Uh, what's your comments on this deal or this track? <coughs> uh, you will have to speak louder. Yes, what? louder. Up. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, this year uh, marks 40th anniversary of US and China relation. Yes. What's your comments on this deal or pr process? Well, my comment is it is 40 years. It's 40. That's a lot, but not that much. Uh, again, I think I could just say what I've already said. The relationship is strong. We hope it's going to get stronger. I think we can do a lot of things militarily also. For instance, they're making a lot of weapons, tremendous weapons, and so are we. We just had $716 billion approved for military last year. Now we're possibly going to do more this year. And between Russia and China and us, we're all making hundreds of billions of dollars' worth of weapons, including nuclear, which is ridiculous. And I would say that China will 
come along, and I would say Russia will come along. It doesn't really make sense that we're all doing this. I think we're the leader. I think we're always going to be the leader. We have to be the leader. I think it's much better if we all got together and we didn't make these weapons. So I think that's something that could be a phase two after this is done. But as you know, China is spending a lot of money on military. So are we. So is Russia. And those three countries, I think, can come together and stop the spending and spend on things that maybe are more productive toward long-term peace. I don't know. If I'm speaking out of turn. We haven't discussed this very much. But I feel that, you know, the military expenditure of you and Russia, us, uh, it's a lot. A lot of money could be put in other things. Would you like to respond to that? Yeah. I think it is a very good idea. Yeah. Mm. I think so. make a balance. Are you committed to that happening, and when will that happen? Well, if we have a deal, there'll be a summit. No, uh, no, no, I would no. say we'll know over the next four weeks, but I think that's correct, Bob, would you say? Yes, and I look forward to seeing President Xi. It'll be here. And uh, if, we, if we have a deal, then we're going to have a summit. If we don't have a deal, we're not going to have a summit. But there's a very good chance that we'll have the summit. All right, how about one more? One more. Yeah, you say you Jeff, you have one? Uh, I'd like to follow up on the sticky point, Mr. President. Is enforcement one of the big ones that yeah, you're still dealing it is. with? Enforcement. We have to make sure there's enforcement. I think we'll get that done. We've discussed mm -hmm. it at length. I think we're going to get that done. Uh, so just to finish, uh, the deal is coming along really well. We'll probably know over the next four weeks. It may take two weeks after that to get it papered, but I really think that over the next fairly short period of time, we're going to know. And, and it's looking very good. A lot of really good things have been negotiated and agreed to. I would really say, and I say it again, a lot of the most difficult points, points that we didn't think we could ever do or we wouldn't agree to on both sides, uh, have been agreed to. We've negotiated out some of the toughest point, really the tougher points. And uh, but we have some ways to go, and I think we have a very good chance of getting there. I want to thank everybody for being here. And in particular, I want to thank the Vice Premier and his entire group of very, very talented representatives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Take a look at it. I'll look at it. The minister recently said the negotiations between the U.S. and China would affect everyone. And he urged the two sides to feel a sense of global responsibilities. So what do you think of this issue? I think there's truth to that, a global responsibility. Who did you say said that? Who said that? Regarding trade and... No, who said it? Who said it? Okay. Well, I think it's true. I think the word global responsibility, I, those are two nice words. And frankly, uh, maybe we do have a global responsibility between the United States and China. I think it's actually, uh, uh, actually, it's well brought up. It's true. I think we do have responsibility to the world, both countries. And uh, that's what I think that's maybe to a certain extent that's a big reason here we're here. This will be a tremendous thing for the world. Forget about China, forget about the United States. This will be a tremendous thing for the world if we get it done. Let's see what happens. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. None whatsoever. He's a highly respected man. He's a friend of mine. He's somebody that gets it, and I hope everything goes well. But Herman Cain is a very good guy. Thank you very much. Thank you.